We are really just uh, delighted to, to have Megan uh, here today. Uh, Megan is, a, is an entrepreneur, uh, is, an, uh, is a tech evangelist, and um, she is currently the CEO of Shift7. She, was the, uh, and she is, was the third CTO of the United States. Uh, before that, she was the, uh, the VP of, of uh, new business development at Google. And while her, her list of accolades is, is obviously very, very long, um, I, I'd like to tell just a, a brief story, which I think uh, you know, uh, gives, you, gives you a sense, right? So uh, as is traditional, I asked Megan if she would like to have a preparatory call so I could just explain uh, the, the, you know, what we'd be doing with the agenda, you know, how she might fit in that, make sure I answered any questions that she had. Uh, I got maybe two minutes into that call of explaining what I wanted to do, and Megan was like, okay, well, if that's, you know, that's your goal in terms of AI for shared prosperity, how are you engaging the community? How are you tackling this agenda, <laughs> right? So she just started, you know, pop, 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 all these different things. And I would say that the call was a great success because by the end of it, I indeed was much better prepared <laughs> for, this, uh, for this session. So thank you very much, uh, Megan, with that. Please, please welcome Megan. Thank you. Thank you, Seth. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, it's great to be with you guys. Uh, let's see, I have some slides, let's see. Um, so uh, I wanna talk a little bit about why did I say seven billion colleagues? And because I think that it's so important as we work and move into the next wave of, you know, we've, we've sort of ended the very, very beginning of AI and we're in this next phase, right? How do we engage seven billion colleagues? And so that we're not designing at, for, but with the collective genus of this planet and everybody around and really taking into account the challenges and the great strengths of systems that we've built and that we're not sort of training on data that's extremely biased and, and but training on great data and learning that. And I wanted to start with uh, something that's not considered technical, uh, but which is indigenous, indigenous knowledge. And how many people have ever seen the movie Moana? You probably have kids and you've seen it 300 times, right? Wow. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> So many people don't know that it's a true story uh, and that the Hawaiians uh, sailed on this boat um, around the world uh, with no instruments, just humanity. So let's like take the group of us right here. We're going to go on that boat and we're going to like be in the middle of the Pacific and which way do we go? Imagine that and they did this and they sailed around the world with no instruments. Just incredible human achievement. Many young people got involved. There are master apprentice uh, voyagers. This is voyaging. And human capability is so profound. Right? And what I love about the Hawaiians, they not only did collective genius as the community of 300 people who rotated on that boat as they sailed, but also they, when they came home, the University of Hawaii professor called a grand challenge to the children of Hawaii. The Alawai Canal behind Waikiki is very polluted. What shall we do, children? You know, and like just engaging the community and the things that they began doing. They have magic school bus like curriculum on coral with the greatest coral researchers. They're doing history and just the coolest work, right? How do we do that? Joey Ito will be here soon. Uh, he and Reid Hoffman put together the, the Disobedience Award. We were at the Defiance Summit, and uh, the winners of that included uh, one of the groups was the Standing Rock Waterkeepers. Uh, I think of Dakota Access Pipeline Fights. How do we transition to green? How about now? Right? So what I love about MIT Solve is it's an idea of collective genius, not what are we going to do in our lab here, but who in the world, shout out to the world, what are you already doing? Like a venture capitalist, they don't make uh, the companies, they find Zuckerberg and Bezos and Elon Musk and others. Who, what do you got? And so we were able to reach out with MIT Solve to the Oshede Shikone, a great Sioux Nation leadership in South and North Dakota and say, what are you already doing? in housing and agriculture and systems and food safety. And, and, and these are some of the poorest counties in the United States. And 22 applications came in of people already doing extraordinary things. These are the six MIT fellows from the Oshode Shikone Fellowship in the first year. How many people in here have a partnership with one of the tribal colleges co-PIing? Anybody? There are 35 tribal colleges. So the indigenous, indigenous knowledge of humanity is available to us from the native peoples around the planet, and we could partner with them, the, the faculty of these places. It's a really important call to action as we think about artificial intelligence. What are the human values from the deepest roots of our origins that we could bring forth together with the technology and bring our students into that? I always use history to inform, and this is one of my favorite things we found. Um, of course, in the United States, we have pennies that say liberty. This is the liberty penny. 
1792, Franklin, Washington, and Jefferson agreed that the penny for America, liberty, is the parent of science and industry. What a signal that freedom and science and technology are all interconnected. And President Washington, in his first State of the Union, he said, there's nothing which better deserves your patronage to Congress, 1790, than science and literature. And not that was just up here talking about you know, humanities and ethics and technology. So humanities, social sciences, and science and technology together. Because knowledge in every country is the surest basis of public happiness. Knowledge, fake news, knowledge. We're still there, right? So Washington speaks to us. Grace Hopper. Everybody knows Hopper for inventing the compiler, but really who she is is she's like, how about we broaden the participation? So maybe you can be inspired by her. And when President uh, Obama awarded her posthumous the Medal of Freedom, he said, if Edison is light and right is flight, Hopper is code. And code, coding languages in a human language, allows so many more people to play. What might we do to reach to our 7 billion colleagues to let them come in, not on the topics of interest to us. I love self-driving cars. I love precision medicine. I love you know, these topics. And there's poverty and justice and other things. So how can we bring AI to everything and help these colleagues do what they want to do with all the tools of the orchestra? Technology is not partisan. Here's President Obama. He's coming up to talk to the children. And, and they're in a science fair. We did science fair. It was super fun. Uh, the kids are from Oklahoma. And they've made a page turning robot. So first, they've learned at this age that technology is for helping others. And it's fun. It's wonder. It's discovery. It's community. You do it together. You wear capes. <laughs> President Obama says, what did, you guys, what did you guys do? How did you do this? They said, we had a brainstorming. <laughs> really? OK. And then what did you do? We built some prototypes. <laughs> What if we did this with all children? Prototypes, brainstorming. We don't tell some kids, hey, you're really good at math, and you guys not so much. It's 15 to 1, boy programmers to girl programmers and children's TV. So we've got to stop accelerating some and decelerating others. We were able to work on amazing technology with the president and, and across our country. We're doing so many cool things. All of you are doing things. This is just a representation I have about the kinds of frontiers, whether they're personal, you know, brain science, personalized learning, personalized medicine, local in our smart cities and our wise communities, national AI frontiers, global, our global energy transition, green chemistry, how do we live with the planet in a system that's sustainable and interplanetary. There was someone from Blue Origin. She was on stage uh, at this event which was uh, a combination of CMU and uh, University of Pittsburgh were together. You guys are probably in here. Um, she said that she's working at Blue Origin and her husband's working at Boeing. Her children were having an argument. Her son said to her daughter, no, girls work on rockets and boys work on airplanes. <laughs> so we just know what we know. What I want to talk to you about is this. Lots of people don't feel included, and they're terrified. They're terrified of what we're doing. So how do we just, instead of doing it at them, do it with them, find out what they want to do? And uh, you know, whenever we're moving really fast as humanity, you can look at it in the teens and the 20s. You know, that's when the KKK rose, right? So how do we help this fear-based nightmare that's growing slow down and get included? So this is West Virginia. This is Chattanooga. I put them together because we have simultaneously truth all over the planet. One place is in the future, one place is behind. This poor man is getting water for his family. This is ridiculous. There's no WeWork makerspace uh, engine coming in here. Yet we could get in this car and drive to Chattanooga to the fastest. This is the highest speed internet in the Western Hemisphere. That's community organizing, right? So how do we find out what he would like to invent and do in McDowell County, West Virginia, and go for it, right? Um, Boise, Idaho. President goes is going to Boise. We're like, I wonder how many tech meet us. The invisible techies in every town, beyond Boston, Austin, you know, sort of our core Silicon Valley places, uh, Bangalore, et cetera. There's 15 tech meetups in Boise, Idaho. One of them has almost 800 people in it. Girl Develop meets twice a week to code code. This is happening in Gaza. It's happening in Afghanistan. It's happening in Buffalo, where I'm from. These were the dripping buildings all shut down, turned into storage. Trico made windshield wipers when I was a kid, right? But now, right here. Innovation Center. This, is, uh, this river was on fire when I was a child. This is the, you know, the edge of the Erie Canal. People are boating and having fun. There's a cool bike uh, thing. Look at this river. This is just near here. This is Solar City's plant. 75 trucks a day of solar panels will start moving out of this place on the Superfund site that was Republic Steel. 
There are windmills where Bethlehem Steel operated. So we can transform, right? And we are transforming all the country. And that's what's exciting. We were going and finding all the tech meetup organizers from all these cities and really community organizing innovation, getting them to meet each other. There's as many open STEM jobs as people in prison. And every time you teach tech in prison, you get 7% recidivism, sometimes zero. Last mile in San Quentin. But if you don't, get 70. This is the talent for your AI team. They've been, uh, they can transition. So we went on a tech jobs tour all over the country because you want employers to hire from boot camps, new kinds of training. Think of blue collar, no collar tech, three months in, right? Whether it's through edX programs or whether it's through the boot camps all over the country. Mayors knowing that's happening and techies welcoming them. This is Cleveland. So, so we have a career fair around and speed mentoring, a five minute time, times, three times conversations. Memphis, speed mentoring. This is Oakland, 2,000 people showed up for 200 of you all, they're the tech colleagues in town, to mentor them into this apprentice, journey, mastery. Everyone can come. So all over the country, it's not new. George Washington Carver, we think of him as the peanut guy, but he's like, how about we rotate crops guy? Uh, and nitrogen fix the soil. So he invented, uh, as an entrepreneur, how to, what, we should, what would be in the money, peanuts, soybeans. And then he went in the Jessup wagon, funded by a VC in New York, and trained 2,000 farmers a month, and created the growth of what became Ag Extension. So what's the tech extension plan? We can do that. This is a tech center uh, off the Mississippi River in Memphis. They have a container ship with STEM, kids learning. Uh, they did this fabulous work here. This is Appalachia. Fabulous little company in the Coca-Cola bottling plant. There's three, three main streets in this town. And they're reshoring jobs to America. BitSource, drill bit source code, founded by coal miner entrepreneurs. This is Idaho in Coeur d'Alene. Uh, this group of three couples took this fabulous building, gutted it, and turned it into tech center. Later, they went and they went and did events all over the state. Just community organizing, 700 people now in our clubs, like book clubs, learning to code together. I was on the Indian Reservation up in Plummer right here. This is the people showing up. People want to join. They need to know how. This is a fabulous, you know, Steve Case, of course, is doing Rise of the Rest, getting entrepreneurs, already 50 companies in the not central places he's invested in. Uh, this particular president took his farm, uh, took a football field and turned it into an urban farm. Hydroponics and everything. This is in uh, southern Dallas where there's food deserts. We got a lot of goals. How many of you guys know the sustainable development goals? Yes, some people. Get to know these goals, because AI is for everything. It was the main thing that we learned with President Obama is that we had amazing AI on just a set of topics, and we needed more of it. We needed more researchers, more people, more people to feel confident that they should use it for justice. Like, wouldn't it be amazing that if every body cam today would report in what situations uh, escalated and what situations de-escalated, and we could use AI to figure out how to retrain each other to de-escalate much more. Department of Justice needs a data scientist, right? So does every police department. There's so much on here, peace, AI for peace. One of the things we've been doing with the UN, we did it last week, we actually put up a call on the web, what solutions do you already have for these SDGs? We did it one hour after ratification, and people took the stage at the UN. This group's flying drones to plant a billion trees a year. These folks are teaching law. They're from Uganda. They teach law in prison because people didn't have any representation going in. I mean, amazing things. This is a floating fab labs. I met someone here from Brazil. This guy is uh, Beno, Ho uh, Beno Horas. He's from the Amazon, grew up there for nine years, came out into our kind of a more techie world, learned all advanced manufacturing, 3D printing, et cetera, and brought the fab lab back onto boats in the Amazon. Um, we face great challenges. This is US Congress. This is voting together, and now we don't vote together. We're really dividing out, right? Really scary, right? So we have to figure out how we're going to get along. Sorry. Yeah, it's amazing. In this animation, it really encourages you. It's Business Insider, the Rise of Partisanship, and it shows. And it's really the beginning of divided media, the beginning of internet. What can we do to be more like Ada Lovelace wanted? I wish to bequeath to humanity a calculus of the nervous system, 1840s. What did she want us to do? Use it for helping humanity. This is us whether we like our president or not, and we're just <laughs> liking, hating worse, right? So we're just dividing up. We're building weapons of mass destruction as much as we're building great things, and people will weaponize every single thing you make. So how can you protect a little bit or stay in advance or stay in community? And it's through collective genius that we'll be safer. Right? Joy Boulam-Winnie, Joey will be here. She's a PhD student. How many people know Joy's work? 
Okay, so everyone in here, assignment, please watch the video AI Ain't I. Sojourner Truth, Ain't I a Woman, uh, a remix of that AI Ain't I. Uh, face recognition does not recognize people of color properly. This camera is one of the most racist devices, right? Every time you take a photo of somebody who has light skin, no adjustment. Black skin, you gotta adjust it, you gotta turn on the photo. What is with that? Let's fix that, right? So one of the things that's really great uh, that this team is doing is using a parliament test. I encourage you to use it so that the parliament of Rwanda, Singapore, Iceland, they're all fully recognized at 90 plus percent. I really applaud IBM for working very closely with Joy to fix the algorithms, which you guys did, which is really critical. This is our challenge. Systems are cruel or kind, depending on who you are. And we're training on that data. So we're gonna accelerate injustice. Why should we do that? So go find some teammates and let's not do that because it's a, one of the greatest, most interesting things to do in this century. We started doing that government, bringing techies in government, not because we know more or less, just because our seat was a little bit empty at certain levels. Of course there's amazing people in government uh, already in uh, NASA and DOE and, and, and those places, NIH, but they weren't in uh, the highest levels of HUD or Department of Justice or others. So we just need that teammate. They just know their thing. I think of it like a Navy SEAL team when we're the lock picker, we get you in fast. Other people know how to win the play. And so we worked on a lot of, uh, of policy issues. We worked on bringing new kinds of capabilities, whether it was engaging more people or actually having basic analytics on government sites, going from these crazy forms that we fill out that roll out the door, right, to more of an Amazon or Facebook or other kind of modern experiences, right? Um, you know, so instead of PDFs only, we could have interactive tools. We could have amazing APIs. For example, in this case, from the Department of Education, it was a reference, three different APIs packaged up and a reference design mobile first, so students could do buyer beware on going to college. And so we worked with the census, opportunity.census.gov, on these kinds of agencies having app store-like capabilities on top of them, and then engage top folks like Redfin, Zillow, Airbnb, were really great for writing apps extensions for HUD, right? What data sets do you have? Not HUD, what app, what app do you want to build, but what APIs do you have so you can be like our maps with the US Geological Survey, with Esri and Bing and Google Maps. Right, so uh, green button from the Department of Energy, blue button from, uh, from housing. This is happening all over the world. The Open Government Partnership looks like more of a, a capability it's of uh, NGOs and those folks in governments, but there's a techie crew all in there. And whether you're the tech folks from Kenya, Canada, uh, India, Singapore, US, France, Mexico, Brazil, all of those teams are working together in open source way, so we don't have to have a gajillion copies of the same kind of governmental capabilities. New data sets are coming, and our colleagues decided with this new income one to hack the pay gap. Huge problem for the economic future. So all kinds of apps that would help us with that pay gap. We could use AI. We made a cabinet for data science. Cabinets are kind of cool. So when you want to be in a cabinet. So we were able to get all the agencies, and they crowdsourced this rubric of what does it mean to be not so great and super awesome on data in these areas. And then it was so good because the leader of an agency can look and say, wow, I'm not even on this paper. Right, so it helps people. We can use our collective genius this way. We can crowdsource a speaker for the climate summit. This actually happened at the UN. You know, people are redesigning cities. This is uh, one of the fellows in the Oshadi Shikoni Fellowship. You know, how do people really want to live? Um, hackathons and foster care. Why is technology and AI just for precision medicine in H and not in HS and our child services, food stamps, rural child poverty? Uh, we feed 22 million children in the winter and 6 million in the summer. That's a big data problem, right? So why are they still hungry? So let's figure that out. It's a lot of states and places and rules, et cetera. Uh, here's that hackathon. You know, Grace is in 10th grade teaching the chief of police how to code here in New Orleans, right? So what a fun high school experience, right? Fix justice in your city, so let's change our cities. You guys are doing amazing jobs of, uh, at IBM getting, and others are doing this, getting the kids into real active STEM, you know, because we have data sets. We did an a, a engagement where we looked at officer-involved shooting, use of force, all these data sets, and getting all these cities to open them up, and now we have all of these working groups. So these are AI opportunities for everybody to work on. And sometimes people do crazy things. I love this out of Sweden, plogging. Not everyone loves jogging, not everyone loves picking up litter, but if you do it together, it turns out it's a craze. So you never know what's gonna happen, but do we want this in the Amazon or we wanna cut down all the trees? How do we respect talent? Because the indigenous talent in the Amazon would invent amazing bio-informed things. Fab labs, and the amazing thing that the South Americans are doing, there's fab labs all around. 
going back to Buffalo where I'm from, Niagara Falls, I mean, there's a statue of Nikola Tesla right here. He used uh, Niagara Falls to light Buffalo to demonstrate AC. Amazing, right? And yet we had bad values about what we thought we could burn up our environment, right? Just pollution, pollution. This is amazing uh, painting from, uh, from Frank Moore of all the PCBs and all the stuff and the chemicals. How do we use collective genius to get out of this? Whether it's the Havasupai at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, the most remote Americans who are fighting uranium mining above them, using all kinds of digital tools to do that, or whether it's this new movie that's showing incredible young people who are solving things. This is a young woman from Bangalore. This is actually happening in her city. And so she just started measuring the water, and she's building a danger map on that. So we can get the kids involved in active STEM. Uh, there's chief science officers. We'll have 30 of them in. Uh, in uh, Washington next week. They are amazing. This is a kid elected. It's the coolest STEM inventor and intervention I've ever seen. Like our job only at high school and middle school, and they change their schools. Um, people are building XQ super schools. We've got computer science for all. Wyoming just voted. All children in Wyoming teach, will learn computational thinking, coding, and computer science from kindergarten, fully deployed by 2023. You cannot graduate from high school in Chicago now without learning to code. So we're getting it done. It's a movement. We have no ministry of education, so we have to do it as a movement, but help drive that. Last thing I just want to talk to you a little bit about is what happens to these particular kids. So some people get accelerated because you see how you can do everything. Ocean's 11. And some people get to be just Julia Roberts, which is pretty cool. But <laughs> when we watch movies, this is men's lines to women's lines in children's film. It happens to be Disney. It could be anybody. Men to women in 2,000 films. These are the data sets that everybody is training on. This is the textbook you're reading, the history you know, the meeting you were just in. None of us created this, but we inherit it. So now we have to own it and figure out what to do. So I bring you to Ada. When Darwin wrote his paper, Ada Lovelace wrote hers. Lord Byron's poet, Math Daughter. We're slowly creeping her back into our consciousness. You know, but she was amazing. And as I said, Stephen Wolfram has this fabulous piece uh, up about her. But she is the founder of computer science. Uh, Ursula Martin just wrote a fabulous book out of uh, Oxford. I like her hair. Did you notice this? <laughs> you know, this is, uh, this is Vivian Thomas and Dr. Alfred Belak. This is from a movie. Can you see Vivian? They're both doing the first heart surgeries at Johns Hopkins. They're in this picture. Can you see Vivian? Where is he? Yeah, he's not allowed to touch the patient. This is not that long ago. So that's why these crazy people write memos at Google. They don't know the truth, right? It's not true. Everybody has always been awesome, everybody. And so we've got to include everybody. There really was this chemistry lab right here at MIT. Ellen created it. Ellen measured the water out here to begin ecology for America. You know, she is somebody we would grab for Flint, the science of natural life, right? This is Ida B. Wells, one of the greatest American data scientists. You've probably never heard of her. She was so famous at the time she was on the cover of the New York Times. She did the red record research. She looked at all of her friends were lynched in Memphis. And she's an amazing journalist. And so she did the research in the newspapers to figure out the lie that was being perpetrated. The way to right or wrong is to shine a light of the truth. She's such a good leader. So justice data. And yet, Ida and Frederick Douglass protested the Chicago World's Fair when Tesla was so famous because African American people were not allowed to exhibit. And they wrote the most incredible paper that I encourage you to look at. It's so incredible. It has all the inventors, all the philosophers, the architects, all these people who would have exhibited. And by the way, this is the woman who invented the dishwasher that's now KitchenAid, never heard of her. Now, this is 1892. This is 2018. What are we doing? Really, there are no black people who can work at Twitter? Google, Facebook, really? You know, really, there's nobody on stage? Come on. So we know that everybody's been incredible, including Wilbur and Orville's mechanical genius mother, Susan Wright. So uh, these are some folks who are modern Jane Addams. They're doing a center in their town in Columbus, Ohio. Jane Addams, of course, the woman who you never heard of, who got the Nobel Peace Prize for inventing social work. 2,000 visitors a day, lots of data. So she was using AI, but on paper. You know, and thinking about these things. I'm in the National Academy of Engineering. We met, and so I popped these in here to tell you these are our grand challenges. 
but they're kind of a subset of the SDGs. And I'm like, how do we choose these? Because these are awesome. And I'd list like probably 10 more. And I thought, oh, 12 white and Asian men, four men of color, two white women, and zero women of color made this decision. So what if we like include everyone when we're trying to decide things in our teams? Think of World War II, elite mathematics, Turing, imitation game. This is an image from that movie. Think of the people who saved 11 million lives and shortened the war by two years with mathematics. Did you imagine them? Because these are them. Two thirds women. Her grandmother and great aunt were code breakers at Bletchley. This is a real story. So we just have to know that women were in the ENIAC team. You know, the UNIVAC did not program itself, Grace did. Uh, there were 13 and seven Mercury astronauts. The Macintosh team was very gender balanced, including Joanna Hoffman, the product manager, and Susan Kerr, who does all the graphics of everything we've ever seen. The further back you can look, the farther forward you'll see. So Katherine Johnson, untold stories. Of course, Margaret Hamilton, who worked here on all Apollo code. You know, this is the screen uh, representation of AI from USC of uh, really Carrie Fisher's lines all the way out and race for Star Wars. You know, we can really use AI to debug our media. We can use it for anything, for justice. This is a uh, fabulous work from the Viterbi School, you know, that would allow us to look at natural language processing, sentiment, FaceTime, et cetera, and what we're telling ourselves is true or not true about ourselves. Really cool work. I'll end here just to say, that um, Olivia had made this amazing app. Uh, you know, just like these guys are 13, they're age of Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, you know, she made this game. Kimura made this app. She wanted to listen in the room for domestic violence and let you call the police if you needed to. That sounds like a great app for Siri and Alexa as long as we protect privacy and security. So thank you so much, you guys. I'm so proud of the work you're doing, and I want you to engage your 7 billion colleagues. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mason. Sure. That, was, that was wonderful. Um, we're going to take a moment to set up the app uh, for everyone. So um, can we get the instructions up here? You also should have instructions on your, on your agenda. There's a page there. Uh, go to Slido, uh, and there it's AI Week. Uh, and what we'll do is uh, this will allow us to ask questions, and they'll show up here, and then we can do that. It's, it's a lot easier than passing a, a microphone around. Um, so the instructions are still not showing. Oh, OK, there There's we go. Some, okay, I see great, this great. one up there here. OK. Do you want us to go to the yeah, top yeah. one? So everyone should Sorry. download it. Um, uh, you don't have to download. Yes, lie.do, it's, it's here. And yeah. So, um, so uh, unlocking collective genius, yeah. uh, collective intelligence, and 7 million people, exactly. So. One of the things that I always do whenever I'm trying to solve a problem is instead of going like this, uh, how am I going to do this, or talking to my team, I'm like, I wonder who solved it. And you go looking around. So that's sort of, for example, how we found you know, the MIT Solve folks, how we find um, any of, that's how the VCs work. I call it kind of venture catalyzing. You know, if you don't have money, you're out searching around and accelerating people. It's something I love to work on. So I think that um, both imagining things within your team, as well as looking around and seeing who's doing that really well. Uh, we have the internet, so it can really engage in an interesting way, and they're really open practices. Like the open call we do from the UN, we got a thousand, over a thousand submissions off a web form from 134 countries in two weeks uh, for people who wanted to present things that they were already doing to solve the SDGs. I mean, a cyberbullying hotline that's at scale in Pakistan by these women. I mean, Pakistan's a very dangerous place for cyberbullying because you can be killed for honor killing because someone posted lies about you. Very dangerous there. So these guys are you know, focused in on that. So I think you look around and find it. I also think the other key thing to do is um, you have passion about a particular topic. So do others. So you're applying AI, machine learning, other things to the topic you love. How can you go not make them do your work, because they're passionate about something else, but find out what they're doing across campus and start creating collaborations across? What are people trying to do in the humanities, in social sciences, and other places? Who's the Jane Addams there, the Ida B. Wells, the George Washington Carver, um, the, the others in those spaces? Can you bring your capabilities and do these cross collaborations? The students will go crazy, because they would love to do this work. Um, in this cross cut. And they, you know, if you look at the centennials, the kids coming up, I have two boys, they're 13 and 16. 
They don't divide this universe by bells. They're on their Snapchat, and they're in some science and tech thing, and then they're on some kind of crazy South Park thing, and then they're over here. They're, they're not dividing. We don't have to. So let's get rid of the silos and start cross-collaborating, and especially, especially reach out across race and gender as well as topic. So getting to these tribal colleges, there's 35 of them. Just go visit. Find faculty there and students who want to be in your research team, co-PI apply for NSF and other grants, do that with historically black colleges, do that with, with other communities, and, and also internationally. OK, should we do one more, two more? Well, um, yeah, something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, sometimes you walk by the National Archives, and um, on the National Mall, it says vigilance at all times, basically. For democracy, we need vigilance, so it's our time for vigilance. Um, I also like what Joe Biden says is uh, try, not, try hard not to question people's deep motives, but question their actions and try to change their actions or work to transform those actions in ways of something, you know, how do we not weaponize our society against each other. I really think that this concept of inclusion is at the core. People are terrified about the future. They don't see a path, um, and so they're reacting in these ways. And so can we fight fire with water? You know, can we show up in these communities? Like one of my favorite things, we were on the Tech Jobs Tour. We were in, uh, in um, Charleston, West Virginia. And I'd never been there before. It's beautiful. Uh, I never knew it was like the fourth largest chemistry production place. Did people know that? I don't know if people know that. Like incredible. But it's also Cancer Valley. And so I think like, you know, how do we help this incredible group? I met the most amazing elite master chemical engineers, chemists, et cetera, there. How do we help transition you know, here in, uh, in the, uh, the engine, which is an incubator here, tough tech incubator, they have uh, nano uh, filters and other things for amazing chemistry transitions. How do we get that technology lab to market faster so that we keep the jobs and the elite capabilities in Charleston, West Virginia? How are we using uh, the internet, not just for digital, but for sort of transformation of all industries, but also for inclusion of all the people, especially the mastery people who can transition and train those with the new technologies. So getting faster through sharing faster, um, solving problems through sharing faster, coming up underneath elite cross-cut teams. It's just proven in the math that the more diverse your team, the better the products. And so the more you think that way, adjacent uh, topics, adjacent teammates, um, others, the better. Should we do one more or done? I think it's okay. If you okay. Cool. <laughs> okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Have a great conference. Thank you very much.